to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Those that God will use in this end time, before he returns, will be men and women who through the labor of the word and the spirit would have submitted themselves to high level spiritual intelligence to understand the handwriting on the walls the patterns the patterns that lead to predictable spiritual outcome there is a pattern that keeps a territory open for the purposes of God the Bible lets us know that that pattern is the priesthood ministry of spiritual legislature through prayer and intercession you see that happen that any territory that does not subscribe to the ministry of prayer and intercession cannot keep the heavens over that territory open in the days of daniel the spirits of the medes and the persians were manipulating men to succumb to councils that were anti-god but there was one man who happened to also be in the parliament and he understood this priesthood ministry and single-handedly kept the heavens over Babylon open. Listen, when the devil wanted to afflict them, they scanned and found out that there was only one thing they needed to do. Find a way of using political power to stop that pattern of prayer for only 30 days. Satan does not need one year, only 30 days of a compromise to that pattern and is enough for him to take not just a family, a region. That means when the devil attacks your destiny, he does not attack you by attacking you. He attacks the grace upon you to walk in keeping with patterns. This is how the devil destroys men. He does not attack you by attacking you. He attacks you by destroying you so that you lose sight of or you lose the discipline to walk in keeping with spiritual patterns. Let me tell you this. For as long as you find the patterns allocated for exact spiritual outcomes and you keep them, your life will be invincible. You will marvel and wonder at the predictability of your results. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you now? Listen to me. Many of you have come here. Some of you are pastors of assemblies. Some of you are business people. Some of you are captains of industry, politicians, members of parliament. Listen to what I'm telling you. For every spiritual outcome that you desire is called an impact conference. You don't just advance because of desire. It takes more than desire. It takes your submission to spiritual patterns I found this in my life and I said this is it the ministry of the word and the spirit opening me up to the various spiritual patterns that are responsible for bringing certain outcomes please listen to what I'm teaching you tonight for many of you here the mantle for the next apostolic and prophetic move over Ghana and the entire sub-Saharan Africa. You are really part of that army, but not this version of you. This version of you cannot do anything much. The, the plethora of ignorance, the devil will hit you once. You surround yourself with patterns, mysteries like chariots. This is how you become mighty with God. And Jesus himself knew what to do. Now here's the question as we attempt to pray. If the devil afflicts your children now, do you know what to do? Not, not random guessing spiritual things. Look up. This is what happens to us believers. 
because of the high level of ignorance and lack of mastery and i said it not not as a communication of sarcasm just help those under the anointing listen did you know that the average believer does not know what dimension of light and pattern leads to whatever outcome so for instance if i find out now that i'm being oppressed by demon spirits chances are that i will pray a prayer like this the blood of jesus holy ghost fire a seed touching and agreeing i don't even know which one leads to what result i just random guess any one of them and the danger is that one will work and because you do not know which one led to which one there is no mastery in your spiritual experience are we together now so we do not know that the various dimensions of results and possibilities in the kingdom have spiritual patterns allocated to them not this is a beautiful auditorium with many rooms am i right on that do you agree with me that every room has a key that opens it now you can hold a bunch of keys on your hands you are holding keys they are all called keys but you can't just use anyone for any door no there are doors that you may need to swipe a card not insert a key that is the protocol for opening the door you violate it a tiny key can keep you outside for a whole day a key that you put in your pocket and yet that key has the power to keep you outside you can cry as anointed as you are you still remain outside the door will not respond to tears it will respond to the key There is a pattern that when you find there will never be delay in your life again it's not just a prophetic word it is true the bible says and the hand of the lord came upon elijah and elijah ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of ahab even down to jezreel what is that mystery that can accelerate men have you found it do you know it can you teach your children the proof of mastery is that you can teach without ambiguity anything you cannot explain you have not gained mastery over many years ago i had a vision i would close with this night i had a vision please listen carefully and in that vision i saw a giant door look like an ancient door very ancient door and I was zoomed into that vision and I found out that that door had many smaller doors you know how um, the post office used to be I don't know how you, you know those small boxes that make up beautiful and it was opening and closing in the vision every small door that opens light will come out of it and then it will close open again and I noticed that on all of the smaller doors on every small door there was one scripture written and that was when the Holy Ghost taught me the relationship between the anointing and the word. Listen carefully. That for every revelation you truly catch as a revelation, there is a grace component represented by that light that enters you. It empowers you to validate that truth you claim to know. That means any truth you claim to have found without the grace component to validate its reality is not yet life in you. The church is full of respectfully speaking i don't mean this to be sarcastic but the church is full of empty bragging we talk about so many things we cannot defend oh god is here god can heal the sick god can raise the dead we say those things now when it is time to make it happen we quietly share the grace and go away that's why you should thank god for platforms like this listen the Christian experience was never supposed to be heard alone. It was supposed to be heard and seen. Acts chapter 8 from verse 5. Acts chapter 8 
from verse 5 Philip went down to Samaria the Bible says and he preached Christ unto them verse 6 read with me please if you're a Christian ready one to read it says and the people with one accord gave heed to those things which Philip spake uh -huh. hearing and one more time hearing and you don't just hear alone you hear and see when God is at work hearing and seeing the miracles which he did what were the miracles next verse 7 for unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed and many who were taken with palsy that were lame were healed verse 8 and there was great joy in that city A time came in my life where I was frustrated with the religiosity of church, not from a sarcastic standpoint. I read my Bible. I read books that were written by men and women. Listen carefully. And every time I went to church, respectfully speaking, I had a lot of spiritual propositions about what God could do. I had songs by the worship teams. They sang songs about his power. They sang songs about his grace. They sang songs about revival. They sang songs about the Holy Spirit. And yet I watch sick people in that meeting go back sick. I watch oppressed people go back oppressed. I watch people who were sincere and well-meaning, buffeted by Satan left, right, and center. And I said, something has got to be wrong. Let God be true and all men liars now listen to me i began a pursuit that had no plan b of return i said i would have to find out what was the secret that the ancient knew what did our fathers find what business did they do with god that gave them authority over nations men who spoke like god upon the earth they commanded dimensions of power read the bible they called paul and barnabas zeus and hermes these were greek gods that these men when you read their archives in hebrews 11 it says time will fail me to talk of gideon and jephthah and barak men who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness shut the mouth of lions And I was watching a generation that was losing something very ancient and powerful. And I knew that if we are to see his kingdom come again over nations, over territories, the world is tired of our talk. The world is tired of our stories. The world is tired of our excuses. Hear me. As darkness looms across the horizon of Africa, Europe, America, all across. Romans chapter 8 from verse 8 and 9, 18 and 19 now becomes a reality. It says, for I reckon, 8 verse 18 and 19, I reckon, it says, that the sufferings, the constraints that you're training, the sufferings of this present time he said they are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us 19 says the endless expectation of the creature he says it waited for the manifestation not the explanation of the sons of God listen to me the Bible says behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we be called the sons of God. It says, now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be like. The church has almost looked like a nuisance to civilization. There are nations and territories today that see the church as an interruption to civilization. But there is a generation that is saying no more. No more. No more. No more that a people will arise by the spirit and the fire of God this was my hunger Accra Ghana it drove me to search 
for God, days became weeks. Weeks became months. And I said, if I did not find him, I would rather die. There is a desperation, the Bible says, through desire. Proverbs 18, 1. A man, having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddleth with all knowledge. Listen, there is the law of encounter. You never encounter God until all of you cries for all of him. This casual, lukewarm, careless Christianity here and there that sees God as an option to just be added that can be done without. You will never find God that way. Jeremiah 29 and verse 13 says, And you shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. That means if you search and you do not find him, dear prayer warrior, their prospective apostle and prophet the diagnosis is that all of you is not seeking him i love you forever i love you forever i love you forever Lord. i love you forever i love you forever life this is my song be lifted forever be lifted forever be lifted forever Lord. listen one night please let me just five minutes and we're done one night I was lying down flat on the ground crying before his majesty I was not looking for fame. I was not looking for money. I was not looking for ministry. I was not looking for titles. I was not looking for his hand. I wanted his heart and his face. Therein lies the mistake of our pursuit. If you're a co-laborer and a servant of God here, let me beseech you by the mercy of God. If your pursuit is just for power, or fame or titles you have missed it from the beginning even if you do a hundred days fasting the corruption of the state of your heart will veto your spiritual experience you will not find God it takes a pursuit that is sincere and that night while I lay down there a stranger walked into my room there he stepped in the one whom my heart longed for. The one who I could live and die for. The one who preachers spoke about and yet do not know him. When he walked, Jesus. He was no longer a memory verse. He was no longer a song upon the lips of a skilled singer. Listen to me. The day I saw Jesus Christ, I knew that many people do not know him. I know today people claim they see Jesus. It's not for me to judge them, but believe me, if you see the Jesus I saw, it will take you more than one year to be back to yourself. Are we learning something? When he, how he entered my room, I do not know. How the door opened, how he got in there, I cannot explain. And now I'm lying down and I'm looking at the ancient of days. Not an angel. Ah. The longing of my heart. Ministry personified. I could gaze on any part of him forever and not be tired. Believe me when I tell you that. It's not like men that you look at my shoe after one minute you're tired, you want to look at something else. Any part of him. It was when I encountered Jesus that I knew that you do not have to talk to speak. No. He was communicating with me, yet his mouth was not opening. Wow. Jesus. Majesty, your majesty, 
Your grace has found me just as I am Empty handed but alive in your hand Your majesty The hallmark of the experience was when his majesty stretched his right hand towards me listen let me attempt to describe it for you before we pray imagine taking the sun and putting it inside an ant that was what happened how i survived it is what i will ask him the day i see his face again that light at his brilliance how that light entered into me I cannot begin to explain listen carefully from that encounter by the next time I opened my Bible there was a straight line from Genesis to Revelation things I did not study what is the meaning of this from whence come this illumination Elihu said there is a spirit in man and that the breath of the all the breath of the Almighty is able to make men of understanding. And in one other encounter that I had with him, he now said, my son, from this day, I give you my presence as a gift. And then I'm seeing this angel standing before me. And he said, this angel will walk with you. I said what is his name and he said he is called the angel of the lord's presence this is why you see and hear these manifestations i explain this thing to you so you don't confuse what we are doing with superstition no hear me please whatever you do do not miss tomorrow if you will call the whole of ghana to come here if there's no space sit on the roof Hear me because we may not have time tonight but let me tell you this he left me with an instruction and he said to every nation and every territory that I will send you to that light that came from you to me there must be someone in that meeting that that light must be transferred to them this is why you see some of these manifestations tonight we may not have the time to pray for the sick and to speak tomorrow i'll have the time to tell you how i got into the prophetic but learn this tonight midwifing your desire and your experience are spiritual patterns prayer is a spiritual pattern he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray not men who are doing well or men who are not doing well men god never prayed but when he became a man he prayed and since he went back to heaven as a man he's still praying all men pray they don't pray because things are bad it is a pattern allocated to authorize heaven Hear me, scattered in this auditorium are men and women. I have had the honor and the privilege of meeting a few of these veterans of the gospel before they went to be with the Lord. All in such, I wanted to hear this transference of mantles. What were they told? What heritage do we have to preserve? so that we become faithful stewards of this grace for the bible says moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful ghana this conference is more than a conference i have come in the spirit of gideon 
to sound the shofar and the bible says that when gideon sounded that alarm 32,000 people heeded the alarm and they came because there is the prophetic birthing of something god is doing in ghana i can tell you this by the spirit ghana hear me a season is coming to an end and a new season is opening up it is a kairos moment in the spirit i tell you this as touching the visions of the spirit there will be an emergence it will start from your campuses it will start from non-denominational prayer groups god will begin to raise ordinary men and women ministries that have no name they will just pray and pray until they evolve into the prophetic counsel of god The spirit of revival and the move of God will move across your parliament, move across schools, educated and uneducated, all together because a season is coming to an end. The Bible says, and the sons of Isaac, who had an understanding of the time, you must learn how to read the writings of the world. Therefore, I come by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic. I sound that shofar over Ghana arise in the name that is above all names I speak to the spiritual climate by the privilege of access to this altar in the name that is above all names we open up the vistas by the spirit we sound the alarm upon the holy mountain Maranatha come revival Maranatha come the grace for prayer Maranatha Come the move of God. Maranatha. Come men of fire. The Boras. Arise. Elijah's. Arise. Samson's. Arise. In the name of Jesus Christ. In one minute I want you to begin to pray in the spirit. As we wrap up. Kabandas katabakata shanika tebete embreke dos koto shalata. Where are the men who watch upon the wall? Stand upon your watch. Where your priestly regalia? Give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem. just one minute and we're done go ahead Paris where are the men and the women who know how to hold on to the horns of the altar Ghana I speak to you a season is ending and another is beginning lift up your eyes and lift up your heads your salvation draw it near Hallelujah. Listen to me. I want to plead if His Eminence will grant me that opportunity so that tomorrow will be a miracle and impartation service tonight where we will trust God to stir up ancient wells and ancient fountains. But for tonight, my head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn. I am anointed with fresh oil. My head you have exalted like the horn of a unicorn. I am the impartation you are receiving tonight is the spirit of prayer and supplication 
something will mantle you tonight at the count of three i want to release that grace and we wrap up my god and his majesty the one i serve i pray over men and women young and old across the length and breadth of ghana the overflows following online in the name that is above all names i stand by the rod of a higher priesthood in the name of jesus and in honor to the grace upon his eminence i decree and declare ghana at the count of three i want you to shout the name jesus and let this mantle cloak you the grace to travel until you shift climate are you ready now one two three shout jesus take that grace take that grace take that mantle take that grace in the name of jesus christ pray in the morning pray in the afternoon pray in the night let his light on behalf of his majesty until kingdom come Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka na kata branda kete kotos kete branda kata pa kotos koto breke te kete kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.